Welcome to Stitching the High Notes Comic Con Edition. Nerd! <laughs> <laughs> Episode 39 of Stitching the High Notes, a video podcast about knitting, sewing, music, the arts, and all things crafty. My name is Joanna, and you can find me on the social medias, most notably on Instagram and Ravelry as Opera Joe. I'm coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area, where I am a local opera singer and arts fundraiser. Hello! How are you all? I have missed you. It's been a few weeks. It feels like more, maybe even a month, so it's a proper sit-down visit with you all. Um, I have started a new job, as many of you who are coming back, welcome back, wonderful viewers, and welcome to any new viewers who are checking out this podcast for the first time. I appreciate you taking the um, time to visit and chat with me. Anyway, I've been very busy. I started a new job and then I quickly went to Comic-Con last week. <laughs> and this episode will be, I'll be chatting about some of the things that I've been making, um, but also kind of giving a rundown about my time at Comic-Con because um, I know many of you are interested and, and wanted to know. Um, and I think I'm going to have a vlog separate from this episode because I created it last night and it is quite epic. <laughs> it's um, pretty long and it has a lot of wonderful footage. It was an absolute blast. So I wanted to make sure I shared everything I possibly could with you. And um, so it's going to be a separate vlog from this episode, but I am going to run down um, some of the awesome things that I did and kind of my journey as I was knitting on my sock, which you guys will see here in a minute and meeting a whole bunch of folks. So without further ado, let's get started. As is tradition, we start each podcast episode with tea time. And today is Sunday, July 30th, and I am actually drinking some coffee. Diddy. Um, I've been drinking black tea. I love Earl Grey. I drink a lot of Earl Grey throughout the week um, um, at the office primarily now. But on the weekends, I treat myself to, well, and every morning too, to uh, an almond milk latte. So um, it is still the morning, so I'm going to have a second cup of right now. And um, grab your beverage of choice, and let's get started. Cheers! So you probably notice I'm a little stuffed up sounding. I have been getting over a pretty gnarly cold that I caught, which I usually get sick. It's like a tradition. Anytime that I start a new job, I get sick within the first week because of all of the stress and all of that jazz. And then I think on top of it, I got con cred, as they call it, the con lurgy, which is you're around so many people, so you inevitably get sick. So I apologize in advance for a little bit of nasally Joanna. I'm going to try to edit out any coughs that I have going on, but onward. So <laughs> to a uh, community cork board. So this is the first segment where we chat about things that are happening in our wonderful community of makers. There's a community cork board thread in the Ravelry group. There's a Ravelry group for stitching the high notes. And in there you will find this community cork board thread. You'll find ask away thread and introductions thread, a bunch of giveaways always kind of happening. Um, a cat and make-alongs details and chatter threads and FO posts as well as show notes for each episode and those can also be found on stitchingthehighnotes.com. So we, um, it, since it's been a few weeks since I've had a proper episode, um, I did want to highlight some wonderful things that you makers have um, 
contributed to the community corporate thread highlighting things that are happening in your shops um, or discounts that you are offering all of us so let me grab up the web page here and the first one is from Wendy Ray on Ravelry and um, Wendy was is has an Etsy shop that is called fat girl sewing and she makes project bags and many are made to order um, and you can choose your fabric your size your style etc and she has the premise of the bags is a stock including her $10 simple sock bags so she's offering you all a coupon code good until the end of August August 31st um, and the code is Ra rave 10 here you go rave 10 that's r-a-v-e 10 and this will save you 10% at her Etsy shop so thank you so much Wendy and then um, lovely Serafina who is Erin from Canada she um, just recently had a birthday and this offer has passed but I did want to give you a shout out and say happy belated birthday and she was offering a 30% discount on all ready to ship items in her shop bling your string so this is a good reminder to always keep checking out the community cork boards thread in the um, Ravelry group and I've got to get a tissue so BRB let's just put this one right here okay still got a little bit of a red nose but we're all good so Back to Community Cork Board. Thank you so much, Erin, for that lovely discount that you had offered everybody. The next thing that was in the thread is from Skyly Knits, who is wonderful Amanda from Michigan. And she has a new shawl pattern called the Nala Shawl that she wanted to highlight to you all. It's gorgeous. The picture that she has in the um, thread is this gorgeous pink um, variegated yarn. And this pattern is in honor of the child that inspired the pattern. Half of all proceeds go to autism research. So wonderful pattern. Do check that out. And then we have um, Nade Duratini. Sorry if I said that wrong. And <laughs> she is Kalisha from Florida. Hello. And she is a new Etsy seller and would like to share a coupon code with you all that is good until tomorrow, Monday the 31st. So if you happen to see this when this episode goes up, do go check this out. This is another example of why it's awesome to check out the discount thread throughout the week. And hopefully some of you all took advantage of this. So she is offering um, a code for 15% off anything in her shop and the code is Lemmy Shadow L-E-M-E-S-H-A-D-O W. I don't know why I'm spelling everything out but there you go. <laughs> she makes zippered bags in various sizes and her shop is called Quirky the Quirky Monday Craft Shop. The Quirky Monday Craft Shop. Some really cool like celestial looking bags too so Thank you so much for sharing that discount with us all. And then there is, oh my gosh, these sock blanks are amazing. So Goosey Fibers on Ravelry, who is Caitlin from uh, Massachusetts. Um, she is offering you all through her Etsy shop, Goosey Fibers, um, a 16% off discount with the code cheers to you. And this is um, to celebrate some new colorways that she has in there, some art um, sock blanks, which are amazing. The one that's like a piranha looking thing with a donut. I think that's from a comic book. Yeah, we'll see. I've got comics on the brain. By the way, this is um, from the comic book saga, which I am currently obsessed with and had been reading for the last year and then picked up again because KT from Inside Number 23 has been too. And then I went a little crazy at the booth at Comic-Con, but we'll get to that. <laughs> anyway, her sock blank, Scoozy Fibers on Etsy, go check them out with this wonderful discount code. So thank you so much. She has some gorgeous yarn as well. And then last but not least, we have a wonderful 10% coupon code from Raspberry Knitter on um, Etsy 
uh, Raspberry Dye Works on Etsy and Raspberry Knitter on Ravelry, who is Cassie or Casey from Virginia. Thank you so much. And um, she is offering 10% off with the code Raspberry10. So there you go. So thank you so much, folks, for sharing those discounts and all those um, details about your shops and your makes. And um, thanks for offering it all to us in this community. Yay! So also kind of in this community corkboard thread section, we had some giveaways the last time I chatted with you all for a couple of wonderful patterns and so I wanted to announce the winners for those. So the winner for the Canterlot pattern, who, which is by wonderful Shelby, um, the prompt was in the giveaway thread in the Ravelry group, what would your My Little Pony name be? Because this was a pattern that was inspired by My Little Pony. And the winner is entry number eight, who is M's Little Nest who is Emma from Wellington, New Zealand. Congratulations, Emma. And she said that her name, which is hilarious, would be Tangled Mane. <laughs> That's how my, my hair is like that today. <laughs> so congrats, Emma. Just reach out to me on Ravelry and let me know that you saw this and I'll put you in touch with Shelby. And the last pattern, the gorgeous pattern um, that we had a giveaway for was by wonderful Josh, who has a pattern, a lovely shawl pattern um, called Wellmoed or Velmoed, Velmoed. Um, and the prompt for this was grateful today. What are you grateful for today? What, name one thing that you are grateful for today. And the winner for this was entry number 40, who is Rudy Patootie, who is June from Carrie in the US of A. And she said that she is grateful for many things. I'm very great, thankful for my husband of almost 33 years. Congratulations. Um, he is my best friend, enabler, and supporter of my knitting, and he is always there for me no matter what. Wonderful. And she said, by the way, this is a beautiful pattern. Thanks for the chance. You are welcome. Yay, congratulations. Reach out to me, let me know that you saw this on Ravelry, and I will get you in touch with Josh. So thank you, Shelby and Josh, for offering up these patterns to you all, and stay tuned because we're going to have another giveaway, because giveaways are the best, yay! Um, also, uh, just a short shout out to everybody who took part again in the Outlander Cal. You probably saw if you were already a subscriber and you got prompted that a new um, video is up that I did post before Comic-Con all of the Outlander Cal winners. Um, I think all but one have reached out to me and I will be getting you your prizes very soon. Thank you so much for your patience as I returned from Comic-Con and then have been dealing with this lurgy. Um, so I'm going to be putting those in the post ASAP and if you have not watched that and took part in the Cal, um, do take a look to see if you won because there's one person yay so thank you again and now on to some of the things that i've been working on so i don't have a finished object but i do have oh ho, hey ho hey ho i have a half object in other words <laughs> So this is my Comic-Con, my first of hopefully two, <laughs> Comic-Con 2017 socks. And I cast this on a little, like the day I think before Comic I left for Comic-Con last Wednesday. And I knit basically all of it at Comic-Con and finished this little bit up um, the last couple of days. So I used, let me go grab it really quick. I used a sock blank by Andre Sunitz. It's amazing. Get ready. Wham! Bang! Pow! <laughs> so this is a sock blank by the amazing, lovely Andy. Hi, Andy. And um, I got jumped at the chance to purchase this, gosh, I think three or four months ago. I can't quite remember when. Um, with the intention of this being my Comic-Con project. And it was so much fun to take out and work on. I noticed a few people kind of going, what is that? Yeah, and including one knitter who I met there. She was like, is that a sock blank? And I'm like, yes, it is. 
So I knit one, I think, I can't remember the name of it. I think it was a wham or maybe a bang. <laughs> um, and knit basically the whole thing and then got into a little bit of this guy. So, and I was carrying it around in my Outlander bag, which my mama made me. She has a lovely shop called Three Thimbles Studio on Etsy. So this was fun to take because it was a very Outlander centric Comic Con this year. Um, so my half object, here you go. So you can kind of see how it knit up. It's so cool. It kind of does like this self striping kind of thing. It's really cool how it does that. Um, and then I did toe up. So I did Judy's Magic cast on. And then knit up, knit up, knit up. Did a fish lips kiss heel. Because it's just tried and true, really easy peasy. And then I did a 2x2 two two cuff. Which you can kind of see. It's obviously not been blocked. It's still pretty crinkly. I rarely block my socks before I wear them um, and then I block them of course or wash them <laughs> hopefully after I've worn them um, but yeah so I love it it's you know not a super tall length I don't really need a super tall length here in the Bay Area however famous last words now that I work in the city it's something I might want to start doing more because <laughs> it can get quite chilly um, but yeah, I love it. It fits really well. I forgot my measuring tape on my trip. And so I remembered on the virtual knit night that some folks were talking about how you can measure our, using your hand and your arm. And so I slipped this bit on my hand and just kind of went for it until I hit right below this bone here. And it was spot on. Who to thunk? So it's usually, I think it's about six inches is what I do for the foot. And then I do, um, for this length, I do five, or no, six, sorry, um, from the heel up. And I use my handy dandy sock ruler. And then I did 15 rows of two by two rib. I usually do one by one twisted, but I really wanted something more substantial for the sock blank. And then I usually do a stretchy bind off, for, but for this one, I did just a regular one um, because I was a little worried it was gonna be too loosey goosey because of the sock blank squishiness. Like once I do wash it, then it might come on out. So I used um, my TARDIS Progress Keeper on the trip kind of mark the right side up until I got to the heel. It was just so much fun. It was is it socks are like perfect for Comic Con for cons. So you know you because I can knit them for the most part in the dark um, because the panels can be quite dark in there. Um, and so yeah, it was perfect. So I've got one done. Got a half object. Lord knows when I'll cast on the next one because there are some other things that I am working on. I don't know why I'm taking this off. I'll keep it on. There you go. So my next work, or the one work in progress that I want to show you all is my, for the summer garment cowl. And this is a cowl that started, I think, May 1st. And it ends at the end of August, so it's coming up. And this is, um, whips are allowed, this is to knit or crochet a garment that you would wear in summer in your area. Some people have quite chilly summers, some have blistering hot summers, so a lot, there are tank tops and t-shirts and some, a lot of faded sweaters. Um, but I was prompted to do this or inspired to do this, um, because of the linen line from Quince & Co and they were uh, promoting a lot of their patterns that kind of go along with their um, uh, linen line um, and so which I think is called Sparrow. I'm like totally questioning that. Let me grab a skin. Hold on. Yeah, Sparrow. So this is the um, linen yarn that I'm using and it's totally blown out. Let's see. There we go. 
and this is in the Eclipse colorway. It's 100% organic linen. And I'm making the Gilead Pullover by Layla Robb. And I have made quite a dent in it. I, oh my gosh. So I was so close to binding off and then I caught something. So I'll show you where, what I've done. I'm on the back panel. I'm so ready to start the front panel with all the lace work. But here it is. Yay! Look at the drape. Look at that drape. Drape. So where I had showed you last is where this lovely progress keeper is that I received from my mama, which is by the lovely Jewels of So Sweet Violet. Hi, Jewels. And it's this sweet, let me try to shield. Shield the sun. Sorry guys, you get it, you've seen it. If you're a past watcher, you'll see it again. So I knit from that bit all the way to the tippy top here. And so what I've done, it's knit obviously flat. I did the underarm shaping. And so you kind of do this like step up increases of cast ons. Um, and then you do increases for so long. And then I'm doing for the first time a sloped bind off for the neck or the shoulders rather. And then now I just need, in theory, to cast off for the neck. And then I'll be done with the back panel. And then, but just as I was about to start doing that, I took a look at my fabric. Look, this is hard to show you guys, sorry. So I took a look at my fabric and it's, there's a little bit more over here than over here. And I believe that this bit needs to be in between. And when I kind of folded it in half, and I'm taking into account that linen, you know, warps and gets stuck and everything and all of that. So, but when I did kind of do it in half here, like this, kind of lining this little bit up, it looks like somewhere along the line, I missed a sloped, a sloped bind off section, if you will, on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm going to I'm going to count if I can the number of stitches that I've I've bound off on this side and that I've bound off on the other side and see what the discrepancy is if at all and then troubleshoot from there. So and I've got some ideas of where to troubleshoot. So they don't have to take it all out and then do it again because that would be cray cray. But I do want to make sure that this sits right on the neck and that the, the shoulder shaping is even. Now, keep in mind, this has seven inches of positive ease in it. Um, just in case you guys were looking at this and going, holy crap, that's really big. But... It's actually, I've held it up against my body and it's gonna fit really well. Um, and I've talked about in past episodes how I cast on for a size too big <laughs> and I had done my gauge, I think once or twice and then triple checked it a bunch of times. So I'm on, I'm on point. So I'm pretty confident in my last words. So yeah, so I've got basically this done once I get a little bit of troubleshooting and then I'm hoping to get the front panel going. Look at that drape. Mm, drape drape um I'm a sucker for drapey fabric um anyway sorry guys I'm all over the place but I um yeah I'm hoping to cast on for the first for the front panel rather and really get started on that lace work because it's just so gorgeous like you could probably see it here in the in the photo it's just absolutely stunning and I can't wait to wear this. I'm hoping to finish this by mid-August, basically in two weeks. <laughs> we'll see, but I'm flying now 
on this and I'm really going to be monogamous basically and work on this. Um, and I think I could do it. I think I could do it in two to three weeks. Um, so that I can wear it for September, which is basically our summertime. So it is cold right now. It's very cold. Fog. Fog is real. It burns off during the day, but in the morning and the evening, brr, I love it. I love it though. So that is my work in progress to share with you all. Yay! So what else to share with you? knitting crafting related before we go into full nerd nerd dumb here so no cross stitch corner this week I'm hoping in the next um, few weeks that I can really kind of start plugging away again at the forest pattern by Satsuma here's where I was last time I showed you all which was about a month and a half ago <laughs> um, so and because fall is here fall is feels like it's here if it kind of um, it's deceptive because it can feel like fall and then all of a sudden we're hit with summer and then it's like a little bit of fall and then winter um, but I am already Jones in for the fall time um, so and fall is when I'm like I really start to like want to stitch and do um, also garment knitting a lot of garment knitting so um, I'm hoping there's some new patterns out that I want to get started on and little tiny ones, like little Halloween-y kind of ones too, um, which I think would be fun. And I'd love to do something for my nephew's nursery. So I'm kind of on the hunt for something within their color scheme, which is Gorello, gray and yellow, um, but can be a little pop of Halloween and, you know, something to be in the corner from Aunt Jo. So... Um, so yeah, and So Delicious um, is on hiatus for at least a month while I get this garment done, uh, my summer garment cow garment um, pullover. Uh, hold on, I'm going to call. Okay, we are back. Um, so I um, am hoping to make some skirts for work. I've got a couple of patterns in the queue that I'll share with you all when I'm getting ready to make those, um, but I definitely feel like I'm back in the swing with sewing after doing my sorbetto top which I still have to finish the hem and I will show you when I finish it um as well as um making the suit that I made for comic-con which was wonderful and I'm trying not to go into detail about it to save it for the comic-con section but so delicious will return soon I did have one one last nitty related thing which was the from the postie and it is a spoiler. It's the last installment of the Skein of Thrones from Legacy Fiber Arts. So, spoiler, 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 if you haven't gotten yours yet, I'm going to hold it up. I won't go into too much detail about it. So, let me grab a sip here. Hold on. It's amazing. So, I was so lucky to get the whole set throughout the course of them releasing this mystery skein, Skein of Thrones. So here is the latest one. And actually, I am going to describe it. So if you don't want to see it, just fast forward. Okay. <laughs> so here it is. Ah! Legacy Fiber Arts. It is maybe my second to favorite one. <laughs> and this is called Weirwood, like the Weirwood Trees. Oh, and it's on Cozy Toes, which is their 801010, which is Merino Cashmere Nylon. Four ply, 435 yards, 100 grams. Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh, I love it. So yeah, so so exciting. And it's here. Okay, you could come back if you are not looking. I wanted to do a special. I had bought two of the first installments for the express purpose of giving one away to one of you. <laughs> so this is their first installment, which is called Winterfell. And since Game of Thrones is back on and I just returned from Comic-Con... I think it's appropriate to do a little giveaway, don't you? 
So if you are interested in getting in this, um, go to the Ravelry group. You need to be a member to participate in all of the giveaways. And then there'll be a thread for this. And in there, just answer the question, who is your favorite Game of Thrones character and why? Who is your favorite Game of Thrones character and why? And no chatter, um, one entry per person. And then next episode, which I'm determined to have happen next week, and to get back on a schedule, I will randomly select a winner. So, yay! So thank you, Sue and Chelsea, for having this wonderful Skein of Thrones mystery skein themed extravaganza. It was so much fun. And I think I had asked you early on, but thank you for allowing me to purchase and give away one of these two. I am so in love with all of it. I do think I was just looking over here. I can't find it hold on oh yeah so here it is here's Winterfell and all of its glory so you can see it outside of the plastic that's what I wanted to show you gorgeous so yeah so giveaway go check it out backstage knitting oh my gosh so batch backstage knitting is usually a section where I talk about things that are happening, sometimes nitty related, sometimes music related. Um, if I had a concert series going on or an event that I went to, usually a nerdy event such as Comic Con. Um, and um, I usually have like a little vlog at the end of of, of me chatting about backstage knitting um, but again because it's a doozy and there's so much wonderful footage to share with you all it is going to be a separate episode so links are below for that um, but I did want to chat about my experience so backstage knitting first of all the new job is going great so thank you again for all of your wonderful shout outs of support for that um, also, before Comic-Con happened, they announced the 13th Doctor. It is a woman. I am so excited. New showrunner, new doctor, Jodie Whittaker, I believe is her name, from um, wonderful, a um, um, multitude of wonderful works, but she's really well known for Broadchurch, and she's an amazing actress, so I'm so excited. Um, and I'm excited that we're gonna get a little shot in the arm for the series because I've kind of mentioned it before this last series was not my fave made me a little sad because I I am a fan of the writing and of the storytelling and I felt like it was kind of phoning it in a little bit but I stuck it through because I am a fan and I know that it will pay off in the end like a, a random episode in a random series will tie into an, uh, an episode and an arc three seasons down the line and it will be that more impactful because you had experienced it and seen the story from the past so and that's why I kind of love Doctor Who because of this like epic arc of storytelling it's amazing so that was really great and then there was Comic-Con 2017 boop, boop, boop. So, where to begin? I wrote down a lot of notes. <clears throat> I'm going to try to be detailed, but be swift, so you guys can go watch the vlog. So, Wednesday, we went for five days. Five days. With my wonderful friend, Ashley. This was a San Diego Comic Con, kind of the one that started it all. One of the first ones. Um, and we got there on Wednesday. Uh, about like four o'clock ish and once we got into the hotel room and had some dinner we walked the exhibit hall floor which was way more packed than we had thought so the exhibit hall is where um, all of the networks all of the comic book artists all of the graphic artists all of the toy makers are all crammed into this hall it's basically stitches west style exhibit hall I'm trying to think of like palm fest all of that kind of stuff but it's comic books and big movie companies and studios it's like your your independent artist next to the stars network it's really but they're all into storytelling and doing it in a graphic um, not a graphic but you know in a um, aesthetic art form a visual art there you go visual arts 
So we walked to the exhibit hall. It was already really packed. We had gotten our badges. We, well, we already had our badges, but we got our lanyards and our giant, our giant bags, which I only carry around once I get it. I mean, look at this. Are you ready for this? I mean, come on now. <laughs> so everybody gets one of these bags. They're like a little backpack, usually the Warner Brothers. This year, it was really nice because they had like the snaps at the top. Last year it was Velcro and it was kind of annoying. Um, but this is so you could put all of your swag in there, your posters, whatnot. Um, I got a DC one, which I find ironic because I'm a Marvel gal, but whatever. But I liked the back bit. And last year I got like a, oh, last year I got like a Supergirl one, so whatever. Anyway, so we walked around, I'm looking at my notes here, and I made a beeline, we, or we did, actually, no, Ashley went and bought another puppet, another shoulder puppet, my arch nemesis, it's so weird, but she loves that thing. So she went and bought that, and I went to the Star Wars pavilion, if you will, oh my gosh, it was gorgeous. I loved how they had the flow of it too. There were a lot of things going on around it, but there was like this walkway in, in the midst of it, which really helped with traffic flow. I was all about, if your booth and your presentation had good traffic flow, you got a good check mark for me. So in the Star Wars pavilion, they had toys and all kinds of stuff that they were selling. They had a photo kind of opportunity where you could take a photo with, um, costumes and and uh, uh, figures that were made up to look like characters from the series um, and then they had her universe which is a clothing brand that um, has really nice couture-ish not couture-ish but really nice like everyday kind of work clothes blazers blouses all kinds of stuff but with kind of quasi subtle nerdy themes and I bought some stuff I lost it so I got first of all I got this t-shirt this was not like this is a t-shirt but oh my gosh it's so cute so it's got Luke Skywalker moisture farmer turned rebel pilot it's so cool so I love this I loved like the color scheme of it and the vintage kind of look. So very excited for this. And then they had some stuff that I've got my eye on that I want to get like a circle skirt and stuff, but I decided to go with this. It's a little cropped 50s-esque sweater that has like this kind of cool rebel pilot Fleur de Lis almost looking symbol. Yay! So I'm very excited to wear this. I love it because they go up, I think, to like 5X. So they run the gamut size wise, which is amazing. And I love the little buttons. They're like these little vintagey looking pearl buttons. It's wonderful. So you will be seeing me wear this quite often, probably. So I took a chance to get some of that. Ashley bought another puppet. And then she came and visited me in the pavilion and took a look. And then we took a picture with the figures. We saw a guy who was all dressed up in Star Trek um, garb, which was hilarious. Um, and we were all like taking photos and laughing. Um, and then I wanted to go to the Outlander booth, which was... Hold on, I got a cough. So the Outlander booth was Jamie's Print Shop, which if you have read the books, you will know what that means. If you don't, in season three, you will find out. And it was a hot ticket place to be. Um, you had to line up on, so it was like in the middle of the exhibit hall, and you had to go to the wall, one of the back walls, to line up there. And it just it ended up being impossible to get into. And when I asked around, I was like, is it worth like trying to like circle around and get a ticket to stand in line? 
And they were like, well, you could buy a t-shirt and you could buy a flask and you could buy this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, but there's no like immersive experience. You don't get to like take a photo with the print printing machine or anything. The people that I talked to said, no, you just get the opportunity to buy this stuff. And I was like, that's cool. And especially after I went to the panel later, I was like, I'm good. <laughs> Peace out. So, <laughs> so that was, it was a bummer, but it was fine. So then we went back to the hotel, which we stayed at the Marriott next door, which was amazing. And knock on wood, <laughs> if we're able to go next year, we could stay at a place nearby again, because that was amazing to walk out of the hotel and basically be right at the convention center. It made such a big difference. And it increased our participation in a lot of stuff or at least mine anyway so we went back um that on Wednesday and we had a drink and then we went like straight to bed because we had to be somewhere in the morning so on Thursday morning we woke up I woke up early because my clock is just set to like 6 or 6 30 now um especially when it's light out and it's summertime if the sun is up I'm up so it's all good but I was on Twitter. I was like checking the um, SDCC, San Diego Comic Con unofficial blog Twitter feed because they were amazing at gathering information about the status of lines, the status of like swag, of hot things to do, things like don't waste your time on. It was it was a wonderful resource to kind of check in on. And so I was trying to check on the Game of Thrones experience line because um, that's what Ashley and I had set basically the day to do <laughs> um, was to try to get into this experience where you could take a, as far as we knew, the main event is that you get to take a photo with a reproduction of the, um, of the Game of Thrones throne. So, um, we, <clears throat> so... <laughs> So I woke up and I was checking the Twitter feed and it was at this point, I think seven o'clock and the line had already gone around the block and was on its second time around by seven o'clock. And we had said that we would wake up at like 8.30 and then grab breakfast and go. So... I ended up just getting up and getting ready. I did my hair, did all this stuff, and she kind of rustled around. And I said, Ashley, I know you don't want to get up yet, but this is where the line is right now. And she went, <gasps> and then like got up and we got ready and we got breakfast and we ended up getting, we got in line. We were on the second time around. At one point, somebody was coming around saying, you're in the chance section like you only have a slight chance of getting in and then at another point somebody was like you're gonna get in but it's gonna be like basically close to the opening time or closing time we got there probably about 8 30 or 9 I think and it wasn't due to open till 11 and it closed at 6 so do the math of how long we were in line and would have been in line about five hours in <laughs> Um, uh, Ashley's cousin Jackie, hi Jackie, and then my friend Jackie as well, um, arrived, um, in line with us to take part, and we were, like, losing steam, we were, like, I, I was, like, I'm in this, but this is gonna eat up our whole day, you know, and there wasn't really anything else we wanted to do, um, but, I mean, up until, like, 6 p.m., but, it was it was a lot. It was a lot of standing. You couldn't like really sit a lot. Side note, I might invest in one of those like little tiny chairs and just like walk around with it because that was like legit. That was awesome. Anyway, um, it was like a, like a little tripod thing. It was fantastic. A lot of people had them. So um, we were losing steam, and then all of a sudden, across the street. I heard a bunch of men yelling and I heard some bagpipes and I was like, what is that? Oh my gosh. It was like 20 gorgeous actors who were hired to promote <laughs> Outlander all in kilts and some wonderfully talented ladies playing the bagpipes. I ran across the street 
with Ashley and I said, you better take a picture with me with him. <laughs> and I totally photo bombed them. I did not expect to like get their attention or whatever. And then all of a sudden this happened. They grabbed me and enveloped me in their arms and started saying Outlander. And I was just so happy. <laughs> it was the best thing to happen at Comic Con almost. <laughs> Not just because they were hot men, I mean, that helped a lot, but it was just that feeling of the Scottish spirit of jovial happiness and, um, but I, I just, in the spirit of like being happy about Outlander um, and other people being excited about Outlander. And I got, they gave me one of these. They were handing out little swag things too. So I got one of these little kerchief thingy. It says Outlander. Yay. Um, and it was great. And they were just like walking around causing a ruckus and... It was great. I think I too loved it because of going to the Scottish games, the Pleasanton games, and and just feeling that closeness to finding a, that lineage of my family um, and wanting to discover that more. And I can't wait for September for the Pleasanton Scottish games. So, um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I went back to the line, <laughs> and then um, Ashley was able to. Um, talk to one of her friends who has a connection to the um, writer of Game of Thrones and um, we were able to go into the experience which was amazing and fantastic and I was so grateful for it because at that point I was very sunburned already. <laughs> I got sunburned, I don't know if you could see, pretty still sunburned here. The back of my neck was pretty sunburned. It was a little scaly there for a while but um, and then inside, it was amazing. We went to all of these different stations that they had set up. They had um, one where you could recreate the King of the North, like declaration of Jon Snow, and one of you could be Jon Snow or, you know, Sansa or whatever. Um, then you went around and you took a photo with the Game of Thrones. Um, or the throne. I am a horrible fan right now because I'm totally blanking on the name of the throne, but you all know what I'm talking about. So the the throne. Then you could take a photo too with the um, with um, Daenerys' throne, the Dragonstone. So that was amazing. So I took a photo there. Um, we all did. Um, and then we stood in line for this 360 kind of like slow-mo thing that you could do where you could dress up like um a night of the you know a night of the watch or you could do i still regret not doing um one of the wildling outfits i wish i had done that because red hair and you great but anyway beggars can't be choosers so we did that um they also had like this big map and we ended up i don't have the footage but my um friend jackie she had this guy take footage of us pretending to like map out the war that was to come and is about to happen. Um, and then we, there was like this game where you could like, it was kind of like Wii or whatever, where you had like this controller that looked like a dagger of dragon glass. And then you like killed white walkers on it. And then you got to take this photo um, of you looking like a white walker. And it was great. We were in there for like half an hour, which explains why the line was taking so long to move outside, but it was really worth it. And then we got some swag. So we got some, this is what you use. It's like this slap bracelet and it had this um, doohickey inside that you use to scan every time you go to a station and then they send you the picture or the video of it um, on your email because you, um, give that information when you get into the experience. So in the vlog, you will see I have all of that in there and I've probably put up some of it here too because I'm crazy and I love to edit. <laughs> so that was cool, you wore this around. It was like good old slap bracelet. That's janky and not working now, so there you go. And then when you leave, you got a bag. So I got a little Game of Thrones bag to take my knitting around in for a little while here. 
which is great. Sponsored by Box Lunch. And you got, we got this wildfire pin, which I'm gonna put on my field bag. There you go. Which really looks, I'm gonna take it out of the thing. It kind of, I looked at it and I was like, it looks like the Jetsons to me. It doesn't look like wildfire, but whatever. So there you go. Sorry for the light, y'all. I'm just too pasty and white today. And then we got this little, this little guy. Oh God, he looks so scary. <laughs> So this is a little White Walker Funko doll. It's He looks kind of like translucent-y. And I kind of swear like he gets lighter in the light, like a mood ring kind of thing, but I'm not sure. That's kind of scary looking. Ooh. So, and then we got some other stuff like brochures, you know, sponsors. As somebody who works with in-kind sponsors off and on and I highly appreciate their support and willingness to promote but this I'm gonna give to my friend Nora who is a graphic designer at Berkeley Rep where I used to work and because she's a huge Game of Thrones fan check this out what winter came for house Frey. spoiler alert <laughs> So cool. A little, not something I really would want on my wall. I'm more of the fluffy kitten, art deco-y graphic type person. But, so that's gonna go to my friend. And I'm trying to think if we got any other swag. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but those were the highlights. So it was, it was so much fun and it was so great to have the opportunity to take part in it. Um, <clears throat> then after that we went to, let's see, I'm looking at my notes here because a lot happened. <clears throat> then we grabbed breakfast. No, no, we didn't. <clears throat> So then we went to uh, back to the hotel to like recharge our batteries and our phones. But I had kept I had had like little battery packs with me, so it was fine. But um, we went and like cooled down and like chilled out for a bit. And then we went to a promo party for Imager um, through a connection of one of Ashley's uh, husbands and and one of her husbands. You know what I mean? A connection that her husband has and and her as well. And so that was a lot of fun to like um, learn about the company, to meet some of the folks there. Um, it was a really cool space in kind of near the marina. Um, and I got a little bit of swag there. I played some uh, Miss Pac-Man, which was a lot of fun. But I got these cool stickers that all are like pixelated that have the imager. And bacon, because bacon. And I got these kind of cool Things. I don't know if I'll ever wear these around, but they're pretty funny. I mean, they're like pixelated glasses. You can see my camera right there. So yeah, so that was, uh, I'm trying to think if there was something else. I think that was it. But yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Then we peaced out from that and we went to, Ashley and I went to a Game of Thrones musical uh, parody. And... That was good. I was really tired, so I felt bad because she was having a really good time, and I just I couldn't get into it, and I was really tired, so we ended up leaving an intermission. Sorry, um, but it was fun to take part in. It was really it was funny. Um, so yeah, so then we went back and chilled out and went to sleep, and then Friday was Outlander Day. Outlander Day. So I made the decision, the hard decision, that turned out to be the best decision, not to go to the earlier panels, which were The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones in Hall H. Because of seeing all of the promotion, all of the hype, I think the trailer had just come out at that point for season three for Outlander. I was like, there's gonna be lines around the block. I'm not gonna be able to get in. I, I was like, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go to the exhibit hall and shop around a little bit and then go 
stand in line for as long as I need to to go see my beloved Outlander cast. And the herself was there too, Diana Gabaldon. So um, we went to the exhibit hall. We got some good breakfast beforehand. And then I went, I was like all prepared. I downloaded all of these podcasts from you wonderful podcasters out there. I had like, we'd gone to the Image Comics booth and I bought um, volume three and four of Saga. Including this t-shirt of the Lion Cat. And also this pin of Gus, which I will be putting on my field bag very soon. I was going to put it on yesterday and then I was like, I need to reorganize my pins on there. It's a lot of bling happening. Um, so I was like, okay, I got reading material. I've got podcasts. I've got my knitting. I'm like, I'm all ready. And I got there like at 1130 to the line for ballroom 20, which is the second biggest room. I walked right in. <laughs> the panel for Outlander was at 5 p.m. So like a real trooper, I stayed in the room all day and I made my way up to basically the front of the second section so I could see actor face and I, you know, felt like I was watching them. I didn't have to like watch the screens the whole time. And I was around my people by the end of the, the day. I saw some wonderful panels. The second favorite being the Brave New Warriors panel, which was a mix of actors who from various shows including Richard Rankin who plays Roger on Outlander and he's so fabulous. Um, it also had uh, Chief Hopper from Stranger Things the actor who is um, David Harbour. I wrote down the names. Um, it also had Christopher Maloney, um, Colin O'Donohue from Once Upon a Time which I, I had no idea. I've Watch, I haven't watched that in like three seasons at least, and there's a lot going on. <laughs> so I need to, I need to catch up on that maybe. Um, and then also Rodrigo Santoro from Westworld, among some other things, and Ricky Whittle from American Gods. I still need to watch American Gods. They were all so adorable and they had such good chemistry together. Um, it was wonderful to, it was a fun panel. Um, I like going to panels mainly because I've kind of mentioned this before. It's like a meet and greet, um, what we call a meet and greet um, at the theater. And they also do them at the opera too, where it's a chance to hear from the makers themselves, from the storytellers, the composers, the librettists, the book writers, the scenic designers, the lighting designers, how they are working together to create this piece of art um, for the stage and so panels for the most part can really be that which is why I find it really wonderful and when you find a gr great group of people who work well together who feed off of each other creatively um, it's wonderful to experience that um, um, but then there's also the Brave New Warriors panel where they're just adorable and riffing off of each other and doing silly things. So it was a lot of fun. Um, a few um, panels later, it was Outlander. It was amazing. I was around fellow Outlander fans. We chatted about it throughout the day, about what brought them to the series or the books, a lot of them had been reading the books since they got, came out. Um, the really hardcore peeps were up front and they were all dressed up and it was great. Um, and then they came out and they were just so wonderful. They played a game of truth or dance because the panel um, panel moderator was Jenna Dwan Tatum, who's married to Channing Tatum, but she's an amazing dancer and performer in her own right. Um, and she is a super Outlander fan, so she did a wonderful time moderating and asked some wonderful questions, which didn't get really deep, and I started to get suspicious in a good way, because this panel was set aside to be an hour and a half. They're usually only an hour, so I was like, I bet we're going to see something. I bet we're going to see something. She played Truth or Dance, which was adorable. I have all of the footage in the vlog, as well as 
links to the full panel, which you can see the Outlander one on the STARS YouTube channel, by the way, if you haven't seen it already. Um, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden they were like, okay, we're done. And people were like, oh no, what's happening? And I'm like, wait for it. And they were like, oh, I think we should show them some more footage. And everybody was like, yay, that's great. There's like half an hour late, you know, left. I was like, wait for it. Oh no, we'll show you the first episode of season three. What? The place went crazy. People were crying. <laughs> Are you even kidding? When the theme song came on, I cried a little bit. And we were all singing together. And we were crying. The woman next to me was like, I don't know why I'm crying. And I was like, I just, I cry every time I hear the song. But it, it's being with everybody. And she was like, me too. And then it was, you couldn't hear a pinprick prick in the house. Like, it was, the, I'm not going to say anything. Just that we're in for a really great season. And we're in for a continuation of some fantastic storytelling and some wonderfully acted scenes. From one episode, I'm getting a vibe again back to the first season. Just meaning, yeah, I'll just leave it there. I'm just so excited. So September 10th is when it premieres. So. I was a happy little Outlander fan coming out of there. It was a wonderful day full of other wonderful panels and meeting people and knitting a bunch. I think on my sock I got up to probably about here and I had started out down here. So it was great. And I probably could have done more, but I was chatting with people and taking footage and all that stuff. So it was great. So yeah, so then after that I met up with Ashley who had gone to the other panels, which she said it was probably good that I missed um, the Game of Thrones panel. I remember last year I was lucky enough to go to it and she said, you know, they're not, a lot of them don't work together. A lot of them have never had scenes together up until probably the next couple of seasons. But, which I thought that this was the last season. Sorry if I've been telling everybody that, but it's the second to last. Um, so she said, you know, it just was a weird vibe. It was like, you know, they didn't riff off of each other and go really in depth. So, um, and then the Walking Dead one was really great, she said. But I'm not, I'm not, I like the Walking Dead. I'm just not, I can't get into it. It's too, it's too, too for me. Anyway, if you want, if you want more details about that, reach out to me. But yeah. Anyway, so I felt like I had made the right decision to spend my day in Ballroom 20, and it was great. And then we met up for dinner. We saw this impromptu, like, parade of cosplay going by, which was amazing. Um, and then we went to... What did we do after that? See, this is where I had to write things down. Oh, then we went to... <laughs> I'm making this face because it was like... It turned out to be a wonderful memory, but I couldn't believe I went to this... Um, just because it's not my thing, all the power to you all if it is, but we went to a panel called Klingon Lifestyles, <laughs> and it was a rare late night panel, uh, I think it was like at 8.30, when Comic-Con is really shutting down, we had to tell them why we were coming back into the convention center, and it turned out to be... A play that has been to celebrate Klingon and Star Trek culture that has been put on by this group of folks I think this was the 24th year um, and it was your typical like play put on by a bunch of friends who are all passionate about the same thing it was you know it was a little like Christopher Guesty waiting for Guffman-y <laughs> but it was as somebody who is a theater nerd and, and comes from the performing arts, I really appreciated it and I appreciated how passionate they were for it and the folks in the audience were passionate for it. It was a lot of fun. Um, 
there was a proposal at the end, so our, my streak of seeing a nerdy proposal continues at Comic-Con. <laughs> um, and it was just fun. It was a fun memory. And uh, then we went back to the hotel and went to sleep to get ready for another day. <sighs> so then we went to, and if you guys are not into this, this is all good. I'm doing this for myself, so I have record of it to share with all of you who are interested and have reached out to me <laughs> who want to know all of the deets. Um, and also for my my friends who were there and just to kind of share the experience. So just FYI, just felt like I needed that disclaimer, but you know, it's my blog. Yeah, nerd, yay. So <clears throat> then the next day was Saturday we were not able to get into Hall H for the Warner Brothers panels um, as we had planned and had been on tap to do. <coughs> Pardon me. So um, we were like, okay, what are we going to do? Well, I already had a backup plan and I was already kind of thinking of skipping <laughs> the WB panels because the Critical Role panel was at 10.30 on Saturday morning. Critical Role is a show on Geek and Sundry and also the Alpha um, website network um, that I was introduced to by Hannah of the Crafting Corner. I'm totally getting that wrong, Hannah, I think. I'm going to put it down here. You guys probably watch it. But she's amazing. So anyway, so it's a bunch of nerdy voice actors who are really well known in the industry um, it, for video games, for anime, for all kinds of stuff, including wonderful Ashley Johnson is part of their group of friends and she's on Blind Spot. Um, I know her as, ooh, got some barks. I know her as the daughter on Growing Pains. <laughs> So, um, anyway, so I have been watching this wonderful show, um, because, I mean, it's Dungeons and Dragons, they play Dungeons and Dragons together, basically, but it's watching a group of actors enjoy storytelling with each other, and to me, that's like watching a group of my friends, you know, hanging out and doing, so I get to, like, hang out with them. It's similar to watching podcasts about knitting. Um, while I am knitting so um, so I have loved it and I love the the rapport that they have with each other so I wanted really wanted to go to this panel and support them and and meet other critter, critters as we're called um, critical role um, enthusiasts and so I uh, waited in line there was a line for it um, and met a fellow knitter. So hi, Heather, if you're watching. Um, it was the first fellow knitter that I had met who was actually knitting um, at Comic-Con. And she um, was working on the Pure Joy Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. Um, it was gorgeous yarn, too. And um, she had seen me knitting. She was like, is that a sock blank? And I was like, yes, it is. So we chatted about um, how wonderful it is to go to conventions or gatherings with people who have similar interests. Um, it's something that we experience at knitting cons, if you will, or yarn cons, <laughs> like Stitches West or festivals like Rhinebeck, which I'm going to. I'm so excited. Um, but Comic Con is this very similar thing. It's um, a bunch of people who are into stories that um, are about folks who are, you know, superheroes or it, really comics are about, I'm gonna get deep here. Comics to me are wonderful because they're about telling stories about somebody who has risen above strife and adversity in some way and has usually found a group of friends that become their new family um and for some folks they've experienced them that, them that themselves or it's just um it's just a universal human story that is told in a variety of ways Anyway, I'm rambling about that, but we were, we had a really great conversation about it. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it was wonderful to meet you, Heather. So we, um, 
finally got in. I got a wonderful seat and then it was a wonderful panel of just, I've laughed so hard. It was so um, <clears throat> jovial. It was so heartwarming. It was just a really great space to be around people who love this show, love the folks who put it on, love the stories that they've been telling. They've been playing this Dungeons and Dragons particular campaign, if you will, for five years. So they've created these characters. It's like watching theater, but long-term theater. Um, they didn't do like play the game on stage. They were talking about it, but, um, but yeah, I just, I love it. I think it's so fascinating. I think it's a new form of theater that's really on the brink of something that's going to happen. And I kind of remember at Berkeley Rep, I think there was a part of the new play workshop that they have every summer. I vaguely remember a few years ago, I think somebody was trying to figure out how to, how to bring that onto the stage, like the culture of Dungeons and Dragons and theater and live theater. I think it's fascinating. I could talk a whole podcast about it, but I will move on. So after that, I met up with Ashley and then we went to, uh, where did we go after that? Oh, we went to Blade Runner. So Blade Runner had it in an offsite experience as well. The Game of Thrones experience was offsite as well. It was near the stadium. The Blade Runner one was like across the train tracks, um, in downtown. And, um, I watch Blade Runner to prepare myself for Comic-Con because they're coming out with the sequel. I didn't like Blade Runner. <laughs> I didn't like the movie. Maybe I need to, I really appreciated it in the context, within the context of the time it came out. I think it was like 1982. I loved the music. I loved the art direction. Um, but the direction and the some of the storytelling was really did not carry over through the years so I'm really intrigued to see how this new version is going to be um it's got Harrison Ford again it's got um Ryan Gosling who I really appreciate as an actor and an artist so I'm really interested but the experience was awesome. And it was great that I'd seen the movie because it really sucked me in. So you did a virtual reality experience, which I don't think I've ever done. Maybe I have once. And you do the earphones and the big goggles and you were in one of the flying cars from the movie and you were searching for a replicant. And so you felt all the shakes and everything on the chair and you could like look around and you were like, Ashley was not there. I kept like, we kept hitting each other in the face. We were like, you're not there. You're not there. And, um, yeah, it was like being in a roller coaster, but it was all immersive. It was crazy. It was really cool. And then the screen opened up so that when you took your goggles off, you were in where you had just been virtually. So they had like a live car and live actors a la Dickens Fair, Men Fair. <laughs> and like this all immersive lighting. They had like live rain happening, you know. It was amazing. I got a t-shirt. Let's see. Oh, that was the other thing. I got so many t-shirts. I don't wear a lot of t-shirts anymore unless it's a lion cat, but <clears throat> I gotta figure out what to do with these. So I gotten a Game of Thrones one too. Um, but this is the one I got for Blade Runner. You put you swipe your car just like you do. God, I'm blown out. You swipe your car just like you do for um uh like I did for Game of Thrones and it was like this like automatic like kind of food vendor thing that you do, but it, and then my name came up all over it, which was crazy. I got a picture of it. And then out popped your t-shirt. And you would given your size before. We got a photo that they emailed us later. Um, it was sponsored by Johnny Walker. So we got some Johnny Walker. Um, yeah, it was just, it was really, it really impressed me. It was like, 
said, okay, I, I could see the future of theme parks and where they're kind of going here. It was interesting. So after that, we went to our favorite Mexican restaurant in San Diego, La Puerta. Um, I got some nom noms. Um, and then we went back to the hotel to chill because it was Saturday. So we hung out for maybe three hours, four hours, because it was the masquerade. Yeah. It was the big masquerade ball, the cosplay competition that Ashley was in. So as Edward Scissorhands. So I um, interviewed Ashley a couple of months ago about her cosplay and her creating her uniform, her uniform, her costume. Um, so if you want to check out that please do um it's called cosplay chat um but she went as edward scissorhands she made a gorgeous costume so full of detail so masterfully made um i decided to go as peg from edward scissorhands to go with her so my mom and i um in a couple of days made together um a 1960s suit a la jackie kennedy so um, that went really well. I ironed it when we had gotten back to the hotel because it was linen. Um, <clears throat> and did my hair, like teased it up a la 80s style, which was a trip and a half. So it was like full on like that. It was crazy. Um, and then um, she did her makeup. She like glued down her eyebrows and all kinds of stuff. It was it was masterfully done. It was fantastic. And then we headed over to the masquerade backstage. She got me a backstage pass, so I was able to be backstage to help her, which she ended up really needing um, because she had like a little malfunction with one of her scissors came off. So luckily one of the other participants had a hot glue gun, so she was able to fix it. Um, but she also just really wanted to get ready. So once she put those scissor hands on, she was done. And that meant I was like feeding her with a, not feeding her, but having her drink water with a straw. <laughs> it was like, it was really funny that I was Peg because I was basically Peg. <laughs> so we got a photo together. So here we are together in our costumes. And a lot of folks were like, why aren't you on stage? And it was because it was too late for her to, to, to request for me to go on stage. But I'm kind of glad that she did it. She did beautifully. So I was able to see her in the ballroom with Jackie. Um, and um, what the contestants did was that they came out to a backdrop that they provided a photo for, music that they had provided them, and they did some kind of scene choreographed props it was another waiting for Guffman moment let me tell you um and then uh and she came out and did a beautiful job um there are a couple of links that I'll have in the vlog um where you can see a really close-up good version of it I think the masquerade ball comes out with like an official one as well but I do have some footage in the vlog so you can see her performance it was wonderful so she did a fantastic job it went really late it went until like 8 11 30 and then they had a break for the judges to collaborate and then probably about 12 15 ish is when they announced the winner so we i think we were there until 12 30 12 45 it was pretty intense Hold on. okay i'm fully red nosed but i'm back so, so yeah, so we finished up and she won a uh, medal for um, uh, Judge's Choice. So she got honorary mention Judge's Choice. So, so proud of her. It was so great. And people were so supportive of her. Some of the costumes were amazing. Amazing. So all of that's in the vlog. So um, then the last day was Sunday. A week ago today memories so on the last day we were both exhausted understandably but we had to get up early to go to the supernatural panel because Ashley is a huge supernatural fan so we checked out we put our luggage in 
this massive room where they were holding luggage while people did their last day of con. And we went to the Hall H line. I will never doubt again that you can get into Hall H if the line is moving and you go across the street to the other hotel because that's what happened. And then we ended up getting great seats in Hall H. So um, we finally got in and we got a t-shirt. Where is it? Which was only one size. So I don't know what I'll be doing with this, but it's not gonna fit me. So yeah, it's got all 13 seasons of Supernatural and where their Comic-Con panels had been. It's pretty amazing. We started out in room 6B, which is pretty wee. Pretty amazing. And on the front, it says, driver picks the two, or what does it say? Driver picks the music, shotgun shuts his cake hole. And that's something that is said, apparently, I was told this, at the end of every season, they say this, <clears throat> this is their car, the two brothers from the show. And then they play Carry, Carry On My Wayward Son by Kansas. And that's how traditionally they end each season. It's kind of a way of like, we made it through, let's get pumped up and revved up for the next season. So we sat down, we were like chatting and you know, doing our end of con crazy chat. <laughs> and then we, um, they kind of were revving up the crowd and everything. And this lady came out from WB, from Warner Brothers, and said, you know, we wanted to celebrate this momentous occasion of this being the longest running show on the network. And maybe even on all of television um, in America. Um, and, you know, we wanted to do something special. And then she was like, roll the footage. And so they had this, you know, present video presentation. And then all of a sudden, I think they do this for like the Marvel and the big stuff, but I had never seen it. The curtains from around Hall H, which is this massive room that fits 6,000 people, started to come back and there were video projections on the side. So you were surrounded by this all immersive video thing. And it was the two of them chatting like outside of their characters, but in character about the fans and about it being the 13th season, how they wanted to do something exciting. And then all of a sudden this big like supernatural thing, you know, the music was all revved up. You could feel like the subwoofer bass and everything. And then it said Kansas. And I was like, no. And I got so excited. I started up, stopped recording for a moment and I have the footage from Ashley in the vlog but all of a sudden Kansas who sings carry on my wayward son or whatever the official title is came up on stage and performed the song live everybody lost their minds this was at 10 30 in the morning it was so amazing Ashley was bawling her eyes out understandably as a super fan I totally understand that and it was just so moving. Everybody was like, we got like a little rock show with Kansas, you know, and this like tune that everybody knows. And especially if you're a fan of the show, I think it just had all of this meaning. And on the sides, they had, um, they had, you know, kind of montages of the last 13 seasons and scenes of things that had happened as this live performance was happening it was really moving it was cool and it made me go oh I wish I could get into this show so I'm gonna try to watch it again I know CC if you're watching this you're like super into supernatural too so um anyway so that was really special and then the cast came out and I went to their panel last year with her with Ashley and it it's one of those panels that I was talking about where they're all so creatively inspired by each other and they've because they've been working together so long, they're so much like this family, this unit. Um, so it's just wonderful to hear their thoughts and to um, to be a part of that for an hour, you know? So that was wonderful. Um, and then I think we pieced out a Hall H after that. That was like, we were like, we're, 
we're done. We tried to go to a Buffy presentation, not one of the official 20th anniversary ones, because those were happening when we had planned to do other stuff, but um, alas, that was like a shot in the dark and didn't pan out. Um, but we did go back into the exhibit hall just for a little bit. I tried once again to do the Outlander booth, but I was like, I'm not gonna go there. And then I had had my, it seems like at Sunday, once I've like checked out of that hotel and had that Hall H, my people meter is too many people. Peace out. And Sunday is like family day, so it was like even more people, people who hadn't been in the exhibit hall, so there wasn't even an, a, a, a guise of a flow happening. People were just kind of going, like standing in the aisles going like this. So I was just like, I can't do this. So I went back to the hotel while she was still shopping and I had some, a light lunch. And then we decided we were both exhausted. We just, and I was already feeling cruddy as of like Saturday. So, um, we decided to go to the hotel, um, to the airport and just chill out. And, um, the airport's really close by. So we got there fairly fast and we just had some lunch and chilled. It was great. I knitted, I finished the heel of my sock and we saw, we didn't go up to, I think Ashley would have, but I'm not one to really do that too often, is go up to famous actors. But we saw the guy who plays Rumpelstiltskin, who's also, I think, in Transponding and a bunch of UK films. Great actor. Um, and then we saw from a distance, Colin O'Donoghue who plays Captain Hook um, from Once Upon a Time as well. Um, and it was a really cute thing where this little kid like lost his mind. He was like, Captain Hook, Captain Hook. And Colin just went up to him and like shook his hand. It was a little coughing fit there. Been talking a lot. <laughs> so anyway, Colin shook the hand of this little kid and it was so sweet. And then he was walking away and Ashley saw him and was like, oh. So uh, then we got on the plane and went home and... I was home at a pretty good time. I, for some reason, went into, well, I think it's because it's a new job, but I went into work on Monday. I was exhausted. I was already feeling pretty gnarly. Um, I had to call in sick on Tuesday, wave the white flag, um, but I mustered it up and I went in the rest of the week. I didn't have a fever or anything, so I'm pretty sure I wasn't contagious. As a singer, I'm hyperactive about that kind of thing, so especially now that I'm at the opera, I gotta be even more hyperactive about it, but, um, cause they do do have rehearsals near where my office. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed hearing all of those details. <laughs> all my like little experiences. There were so many like little wonderful things that happened and memories and it just, I really hope I get to go next year, go keep going you know, I really want to go to some that are more local to here. Um, there's one, I think, that happens in San Francisco. Um, there's one that's starting to happen more so in Silicon Valley that's starred by Steve Wozniak. <laughs> so that would be fun to go to. <clears throat> and I've got plenty of, like, other little nerdy, wonderful things that I do as well. I've got the Pleasanton Highland Games, which I mentioned, coming up. Ren Fairs in September. September is a big, like festival season here too um because it's like our summer so and then yeah and I I'm really getting into comic books I'm really getting into um this this for me different version way of storytelling um and to be able to go to these kind of conventions and chat about it and be around folks who are really into that as well it's wonderful so if you're into that let me know I think it's something that's growing and wonderful it's not there's so many different genres of comic books you know that are outside of the traditional superman all of that you know that's wonderful so yeah I'm gonna stop there enjoy the vlog little backstage knitting vlog for you um I am going to aim to have this be a weekly podcast again. So even if it's a short check-in or a super lengthy one like this one, 
Um, I'm going to get back on that schedule. I think it just feels good. It feels good to visit with you all. And it makes me feel like I'm um, really immersed in part of this community again. I've missed you all. So um, I hope you are doing well. I hope your projects are going well. If you would like to subscribe and aren't subscribed already and be alerted to when new videos are up, hit the subscribe button down below. Give it the old thumbs up if you liked this one, which was an unusual one than the other episodes. But um, if not, don't worry about it. Um, and have a wonderful week. I hope you're doing well. Okay, bye.